Hey there viewers and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage where today in the freezing cold I'm going to be telling you about mechanic scams. Alright, so I've assembled a list of things that I've seen from other shops and, you know, fly-by-night mobile mechanics. Not the established with multiple trucks in a fleet kind like myself, but of the variety that I get calls after they've worked on your car and they've made a mess, those guys. So I'm going to teach you how to not get into that scenario in the first place, or at least give you some context clues to watch out for. So let's jump right in. So first of all, let's talk about some scams that come from any shop, any any kind of auto repair place right off the bat and these aren't we're not just talking about if they're selling you blinker fluid but that's obviously not a thing it's been a meme for a while now you could see it all over the internet blinker fluid not a real thing so obviously if they're trying to sell that it's it's a joke don't don't go there that or they're trying to tell you they don't like you and you shouldn't go there anyway if that's the case so some other things that don't exist at the dealership are if they're trying to sell you a fuel induction cleaning service now, on some of the new GDI, I know there's going to be somebody in the comments going, but it's good for the direct injection system. Listen, if you would run and drive on a regular basis and drive every day, I don't think you'll ever need this. Now, the carbon buildup on more modern engines like BMW, it still doesn't work. You end up having a walnut shell blast it out. So all this induction cleaning crap is a huge scam in my opinion. It doesn't work. Most of the vehicles I work on though are 2015 and older. So for that purpose, somebody goes in with a 2006, they're sold a fuel induction cleaning service. You're not, what are you doing? Like, how is this benefiting the customer? How does this help the engine? I've not seen any, any way of this being beneficial. Another one is uh, fuel treatment. Now, both of these are gonna be highly debated in the comments. So if there is an engineer down there, I'll be sure to respond to their comments. So go check that. But fuel treatment is some BS. You can go to the parts store or Walmart and buy a bottle of fuel treatment and pour it right into your gas tank and treat your fuel. You do not need to pay $179 for this. That is a scam simply because they're charging you for something that doesn't need to be something that a dealership does. You could put air in your own tires and you can do your own fuel treatment. So those are things that aren't, you, why are we paying for that? You can take care of these things yourself. Um, now with fuel treatment, I do think it actually does something for the car. So it's not like you're getting no service like you are with a fuel induction cleaning, but you can do it yourself for $8 instead of 179 from our local Nissan dealer. Up next is uh, people who are excessive parts changers. And what that means is, oh, well, you need this? And then they just change everything in the circuit. You go in with a power steering complaint and you come out with a new pump, a new rack, new tie rods, new intermediate shaft, new steering wheel. Like, okay, what actually broke? Do I need all of that? You know, that's something that if they're just selling everything in the circuit, are they just not capable of diagnosing it and they're just selling everything? Now, in some cases, it's absolutely required to do that. Like if I'm doing a timing belt job, you're also getting sold a water pump and the seals and all the different parts that I'm gonna take off with that because that's a large invasive job. But that's pretty standard for something like a timing belt or to do all the gaskets if you end up doing a head gasket. That's pretty reasonable to also put new valve cover gaskets and spark plugs and things when you do that. Those are called kit jobs, but things that are seemingly unrelated, if they're selling you a lot of the same circuit, maybe even using the same words over and over again, that's something, it's hard to detect if you're not mechanically inclined, but you can always ask people on Reddit or YouTube or ask around, see if that sounds reasonable that those things are frequently sold together. Do your research on that, because if you're getting sold the whole farm, that's not good either. Just sell people what they need, fella. You know, cars break enough. People don't always buy Toyota. They buy crap. It'll break. Don't worry. Give them time. Next thing is Walmart and tire chains. So Walmart, you should never let anyone at Walmart touch your car, period. Although if you do, I'll see you for your engine swap. I've done about seven of them now where Walmart changes the oil, doesn't put any back or doesn't tighten the drain plug or doesn't put an oil filter on it, leaves a huge trail of oil and blows up. That's great for me. I get to change your engine, but then they're gonna tell you, oh, well, it had over 200,000 miles, so, you know, it could have just died on its own. Nope, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. You got scammed because you thought Walmart was qualified to change your oil, which is your fault because you're stupid. Why on earth do you think they do it for like $29? They're, they're not doing it right, that's why. You, if you're that cheap, you're destroying your car. Do not go there. Tire change the same way, all these quick glue places, you know, take five oil change, 
Grease Monkey. Now we're Grumpy Monkey. They sound similar, but Grease Monkey, you'll see the same thing. If there's a bunch of oil stains leaving and not a lot coming in, then you know that they're not, you're, they're leaving trails. They're not tightening things or they're over tightening things. They're tearing stuff up. So definitely want to avoid that as well. Now, those same guys that can't change oil are the same guys trying to upsell you on brakes and tires and everything else. Now they already can't do the simplest of tasks. You really want them doing more advanced stuff. Find a mechanic you trust. Now with that, find a mechanic you trust. You should do exactly that, not just a shop, because if you find you like that location, Mavis or whoever it is, and they're doing a good job, which they may very well be doing a good job, is it the same mechanic every time? Because what I do when I look at a customer car is I can see the progression of things. How are things wearing out? Has that ball joint had the same amount of grease coming out the last 60,000 miles? Well, they don't need to change it yet. It's barely wearing. That's something I don't need to worry about. And I inform the customer of such, hey, the last seven oil changes, you know, we've been watching this ball joint, it's still good. You know, we're just gonna keep an eye on it, keep making notes in your service data that that's something that we're, we're seeing. And then we can fix things as they become, you know, worn out. Not just every time you see a problem, oh, there it is, sell it, oh, there it is, sell it. Sometimes that's not necessary for customers. Some people request it, I want my car perfect. Well, we can do that. But most people that I come across are on a budget and they don't wanna spend 1500 bucks every time they come through the shop. I don't blame them, I don't wanna do that. So the guys that are changing the oil not doing it right, are they qualified to do the heavier work? And is it the same mechanic every time or do they just make it the next guy's problem with the air gun and then just forget about it? There's a lot of turnover at those places, that's something to consider. Next is our mobile mechanic scams. Now, being a mobile mechanic myself, I see a lot of this. A lot of people who call mobile mechanics tend to be on a severe budget and the reason they're calling us is they don't wanna pay a tow truck. So they're already trying to save money. Now. There's not a lot of overhead in being a mobile mechanic, which is great. It's a great way to start a business. It's how I started mine. However, I've seen a lot of Joe the Crackhead mechanics, things I would ask for when I was interviewing a mobile mechanic, if I was you, the customer. Do you have any certifications? Where'd you go to school to learn this? What dealership did you used to work at? Where did you, like, where do they get their experience? How are they a mechanic? Are they just saying they're a mechanic? Do they have experience? Do they have, you know, Automotive degree, do they have certifications? Do they have any of this stuff? I've got all that, but do they? You know, I don't live in everyone's area. That's something you should check out. Do they have this experience? Around here, since the economy's been going in the toilet direction, a lot of mobile mechanics have popped up overnight and they're giving us a really bad, bad feeling around here because I'm already getting calls from customers. I just had this guy work on my car and now it's doing this and doing this and doing this and I get there and one, it's junkyard parts, which is bad already. They paid way too much for it. And now he stopped answering the phone when they have continual problems. Well, guess what? You're basically SOL. There's nothing you can really do because where are you gonna, what, I mean, what are you gonna do? You can, you're just you're screwed they're gone they're poof into the night they change your phone number or they or they just block you and then how do you find them again to get them to do the right thing or give you your money back or take care of the problem you can't pick an established business or if you're trying to help out small business and start with somebody small make sure they've got the experience know what they're doing and they stand behind their work what helps with that is looking up reviews now yelp does not count because if you have enough money you can pay off yelp Yelp will make bad reviews disappear for a price. So Yelp is a bad place to look for reviews. You wanna look at Google reviews. You wanna look at Better Business Bureau reviews. You wanna look at reviews that are going to be legitimate from people out there. You know, you can get real information that's not just pay it and make the problems go away. That's how a lot of businesses have conducted crappy business for a long period of time is they just pay the bad reviews off. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, miracles don't work. Mobile mechanics who come out and you know, oh, the engine is blown, but I can pour this magic juice in here and it's called engine restore and it'll, it'll just rebuild the engine in the bottle. No, no, it doesn't. If your shit is broke, it's broke. There's no, I'm not gonna sell you a miracle fix. I'm gonna fix it. Or I'm gonna tell you it's not worth fixing because honestly, sometimes that's the better thing to tell people. If their car is a jalopy old piece of shit, don't tell them to put three grand into a jalopy old piece of shit. It's not worth it buy something else. And everybody's like, oh, oh, the car market. Oh, I can't afford a new car. Why are you trying to afford a new car? You're driving a 2006. Go buy another 2006 that doesn't have a blown engine. Well, I don't know the history. Well, yours has a blown engine. You've done a good job with your history. You know, it's it's not that hard to buy an older car. Why, why don't they consider that? A lot of people just don't. That really irritates me, but that's a video for a separate time. What used car is right for you and your budget. Um, we'll probably make that video. Uh, don't pay first. So mobile mechanics, there was a pretty common scam where they would go around and 
they'd show up to your house and say, yep, diagnostic is a hundred bucks. Great. You pay them a hundred dollars. They poke around your car and say, you need a wing-a-dong, ding-a-donger, right? Something that's not even legitimate. And then they'll tell you, yep, you got to pay half up front for me to do the job. It's going to be 500 bucks. So you pay the half up front. They just got 600 bucks out of you and they just disappear. And then you never hear from them again. Do not pay up front. I do not make the customers pay up front. I charge for my diagnostic up front and my service call for showing up because I'm paying fuel and I'm paying payroll and I've got people to pay for. But half up front on a parts job, unless it's a freaking engine or a transmission and it's at my shop, no, I would not pay a mobile mechanic that I just met anything up front. I would pay upon completion. Now, some of them, like when I started out, I had a little paper contract that said, I agree to do this work for this much money on this car. And we'd both sign agreeing it. And if I did that work, I got paid that much money. So that covers the mechanic's butt and the consumer's butt, especially since I had a carbon copy. We both got a copy of that contract at that point. You were covered. You know, if they didn't perform the work, then you didn't have to pay them. And then if they perform the work and you didn't pay them, now they've got a written contract you just breached, they can go after you. It covers their butt and yours. It's fair. That's the way to conduct it. Don't just handshake deal. And if they're only a handshake deal, they don't have any paperwork, that's another suspicion. They may not be a legitimate business. Look up their business name. Jorge, who fixes cars, is not a business name. What's the business name? Is it A1 Auto? Is it Grumpy Monkey Garage? What's the business name? Look them up. See who they are. See what they do. What kind of work do they do? What's their reviews look like? It's definitely something worthwhile when you're dealing with that kind of stuff. Now, keep in mind, there will always be somebody complaining in the reviews. If it's a Google review, nobody who's happy goes and writes a Google review. It's people who are upset, typically. So keep that in mind, you know, oh, you know, he charged me too much for this, or oh, he did that. I, mm, I, I would read a whole, whole lot and just take the angry people with a grain of salt. Remember, everyone who's getting their car fixed is mad that their car is broken, so they're already in a bad mood. So it's real easy to just push them over the edge and make them a little bit of a homicidal maniac or a ranting online Karen. Uh, so we've covered miracles don't work. We've covered don't pay first. We've covered the reviews and the Yelp scam. We covered the Walmart and tire chain places aren't qualified to do anything and shouldn't work on cars at all. We've covered our excessive parts cannon, people trying to sell everything in the barn door with it. And we've covered our scams for induction cleaning and fuel treatment. Those are some scams to look out for on the automotive side of things. If you go in and they're immediately talking about how some fuel induction cleaning is on sale, you don't need that. You don't need that. Somebody in the comments is going to go, oh, it cleans all the debris out of the intake. If you change your air filter on a regular basis, how in the hell is debris getting in there? If debris is getting in there, you have another problem. You need to fix the other problem. That's all we got time for on Grumpy Monkey Garage. Feel free to leave me some hate mail in the comments below. I will read it. And I'd love to hear the opinions on the induction cleaning and the fuel treatments. Uh, let me know if you think I'm wrong, especially if you think I'm wrong. I'd love to hear the counterpoint to this because I don't see a single one at the moment and I'm I'd like to learn things so you tell me give me some science though don't just be like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about obviously so and we'll see you next time on Grumpy Monkey Garage